As soon as you turned the last page on Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, we're sure you wondered what happened next. Of course, you were concerned about our heroes, Harry, Ron, and Hermione. But what about Draco Malfoy? Perhaps I heard you wrong. Sure, he was a jerk whose family was a bunch of Death Eaters, but in the final book, we started to have some sympathy for him. But first, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos from CBR. Wait till my father hears about this. Change of heart. In the comics and movies, we saw no shortage of instances of Draco behaving badly. Think my name was funny, do you? We saw him calling Hermione a filthy little mudblood, express serious anti-Muggle sentiments, and basically be an all-around jerk. It was really easy to hate him, until we realized that a lot of his ideas came directly from his parents. Soon we understood why he behaved the way that he did, and how much he also suffered for his family's beliefs. Needless to say, after the Battle of Hogwarts, he found himself questioning his parents' beliefs even more strongly. See just who's laughing in the end. Marriage. Draco did end up getting married, perhaps unsurprisingly to a pureblood witch from an old and prominent wizarding family. Her name was Astoria Greengrass, although she took her husband's last name after marriage. She also attended Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, but was two years below Draco at the time. Her older sister was Daphne Greengrass, who was in the same year as Draco and Harry. She was a Slytherin also, and ran in the same gang as Pansy Parkinson. At the end of the book Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Harry sees her along with Draco at King's Cross Station. Sorry, Father. Approval. The Draco Malfoy that we knew was always desperate for the approval of his parents, Lucius and Narcissa. However, apparently he grew out of that when he met and married his wife Astoria. Although she was from an old and respected family, Astoria, like Draco, had outgrown her family's beliefs regarding purity. She refused to believe that witches and wizards are superior to muggles, and as such, Draco's parents didn't approve of their marriage. Draco was forced to choose between Astoria and his family, and he gladly chose his wife. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. Scorpius. When Harry runs into Draco and Astoria at King's Cross Station, he notes that they're accompanied by their son, Scorpius. Although she was strong of spirit, Astoria suffered from a curse put on her ancestors, and knew that she was unlikely to live a long and healthy life. She desperately didn't want her beloved husband to be alone, so she chose to have a child with him. Until his son was born, Draco was ambivalent at best about fatherhood. He claimed that he was completely okay with the Malfoy bloodline ending with him, but Astoria insisted on a child. What a pathetic excuse for a school. Loss. The couple eventually welcomed their son Scorpius to the world, but the difficult pregnancy and birth put a considerable strain on the already weakened Astoria. The family went into seclusion for a period of time, withdrawing from the world around them and sparking strange rumors. She and Draco raised Scorpius not to think of muggles and squibs as less than wizards, despite how his grandparents disagreed. Tragically, Astoria passed away due to her poor health when Scorpius was about to enter his third year at Hogwarts. This meant that Draco had lost the love of his life, and was now a single father. There's no such thing, is there? Heart of Gold There are undoubtedly many things that her fans do which confuse Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling, but one of them is definitely their romanticization of Draco Malfoy. Although later in life he would admit that magic isn't might, <laughs> that doesn't make him a stand-up human being. In fact, not being a magical racist is a pretty low bar to set for anybody. Despite standing up to his parents, falling in love, and having a son, Draco didn't become someone with a heart of gold. There was no way that Draco and Harry were ever going to become best friends when they met that fateful day on the Hogwarts Express. I think I can tell the wrong sort for myself, thanks. Dis Respect. In fact, Rowling notes that the reason Draco and Harry weren't best buddies wasn't only because of Draco's hatred for non-magic folk. Mudblood. He wasn't a nice person and felt entitled to Harry's friendship because of their prominent places in the wizarding world. Some wizarding families are better than others, Potter. The real reason that he was so nasty to Harry is because Harry rejected his friendship. True, we see Draco being a disdainful jerk to lots of people, but he really seems to have it out for Harry. Rejection hurts, and Draco never really learned to take it particularly well. Well. Have it your way then. Rumor. Even though he's still a jerk, we can feel sympathy for Draco after he was left to live as a single father after his wife passed away. As if that wasn't hard enough, he was plagued by rumors tracing back to when he and his wife withdrew from society due to her health. The story going around was that Draco and Astoria failed to conceive, so they went back in time using a time turner so that Astoria could become impregnated by Voldemort. We don't advise you try to picture that union. How can you live with yourself? This rumor may have been ridiculous, but they haunted Draco, and especially his son Scorpius, who was just trying to survive Hogwarts. Mysterious thing, time. Time Turner. 
As we learned in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the Ministry of Magic guards time turners seriously. Getting access to one means a lot of requisitions and approvals, and it's not likely that would happen if someone wanted to go back and hook up with old Voldy Voldy. But it turns out that the Malfoy family has access to a secret time turner. Even though he lost his beloved wife, Draco never gave in to his desire to use the time turner in order to save her or see her again. He'd grown and matured since Hogwarts and didn't want to risk jeopardizing the timeline. Draco Malfoy turning down power for responsibility to the world is something we never thought we would see. Know what I mean? Truce. Although Harry and Draco aren't going to be best friends anytime soon, two managed to be civil to one another after the Battle of Hogwarts. Draco even admitted that he was envious of the close friendship that Harry had with Ron and Hermione. As we all know, his friendship with Crabbe and Goyle left a lot to be desired. It's always good to bury the hatchet and be able to move on. <laughs> He may not be the nicest Hogwarts alum, but Draco has come a very long way since he was a student there. I know. Confession. We learned that Draco had never had a deep desire for power the way that his father Lucius did. Although his parents wanted him to join in the support of Voldemort and become a part of the new wizarding ruling class, Draco had other ideas. He simply wanted to become a star Quidditch player, but knew that he lacked the skills to make it to the pros. Instead, he decided to focus on being happy. Don't you understand? I have to do this. Albus. Draco Malfoy had a complicated relationship with Headmaster Albus Dumbledore. What with the whole Draco trying and failing to assassinate him thing. But his son Scorpius ended up in an unlikely but close relationship with Albus Potter, the middle son of Harry Potter. He looked to him to reach out to Scorpius following his mother's death in ways that he simply could not. Not only did he allow someone else to step in, he maintained a friendly relationship with Albus throughout the entire ordeal. I'm scared Potter. You wish. Dueling. We saw Draco duel occasionally while at Hogwarts, and it typically didn't go too well for him. But despite his defeats, we saw him excel at various magical subjects. However, he got even better after leaving school. He and Harry enjoyed a duel together at Harry's house. At the time, Harry was the head of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, and Draco managed to hold his own in a duel. Not only did Draco manage to avoid being injured, but the duel ultimately ended in a draw. I face an unfortunate complication. Alchemy. During his time at Hogwarts, it seems like Draco's hobbies were Quidditch, cruelty, and smirking. But after graduation, he needed to find some new ways to occupy his time. Over the years, his family has accumulated a staggering number of dark artifacts. But since he gave up the family business of being a magical supremacist, Draco doesn't have a ton of use for them. However, he did develop an interest in some old alchemical manuscripts. There have been many notable alchemists in the wizarding world, but it seems that Draco picked up alchemy as a hobby more than anything else. Fortunately, he doesn't seem interested in developing a philosopher's stone or any other troublesome objects. Oh, friendship. Family friends. To prevent himself and his wife from rotting away in Azkaban, Lucius Malfoy turned on many of his fellow Death Eaters. He helped the Ministry track down those who had fled justice, and while this may have kept his family out of jail, it didn't earn him friends. The vast majority of people Draco had grown up with were now deceased, imprisoned, or in hiding. Meanwhile, he had been shown kindness from people he had been raised to hate, like Dumbledore and Harry. It's true then. Hermione. It's no secret that Draco Malfoy and Hermione Granger weren't exactly best friends at Hogwarts. In fact, her husband Ron Weasley was so resentful that he encouraged his daughter Rose Granger Weasley to stay away from Scorpius. But Hermione was more forgiving. During the ambush of Delphini in Godric's Hollow, Draco expressed amusement to be taking orders from Hermione. Draco may not have joined their friend group, but at least he can now hang out with Harry, Ron, and Hermione without getting punched. Protect him from harm. Compartmentalization. Draco is a skilled wizard, but even those proficient at magic can struggle with occlumency. However, we know that Draco managed to pick it up quite well from his aunt Bellatrix Lestrange. J.K. Rowling claims that this is because Draco is incredibly skilled at compartmentalizing different aspects of his life. This explains how he was able to suppress his good traits in order to become a Death Eater. After Voldemort was defeated and Draco left Hogwarts, he finally stopped having the need to keep different aspects of his life and personality so separate all the time. But you loved that, didn't you, Potter? Family business. We all know that Lucius Malfoy was a wealthy man, but what did he do for work? Although he looked down on Arthur Weasley for his vocation, Lucius was technically unemployed. Because of his family's vast fortune, he did not have the need to work, and so he chose not to. He even lived on his family's estate, Malfoy Manor. This means that he had plenty of time to enjoy curating his collection of dark artifacts and practicing his alchemy. 
It was Draco who disarmed Dumbledore that night in the Astronomy Tower. Last gift. Lucius was also a powerful wizard with a passion for collecting dark magical artifacts. He worked with Theodore Knott to create a new Time Turner. This one would not be bound by the time limits of those controlled by the Ministry of Magic. However, Lucius never actually used it to go back in time, as some might have suspected. Despite his past, it appeared that Lucius Malfoy preferred a world without Voldemort. Perhaps it would be more useful if I were to transfigure Mr. Potter and yourself into a pocket watch? Transfiguration. Although he chooses not to work, that doesn't mean that Draco doesn't have considerable talents. In Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, we saw Draco transform Harry into a convincing doppelganger of Voldemort. This meant that they were able to fool and ambush Delphine, and it displayed an extremely high level of competency at a demanding magical skill. If I didn't know better, Draco, I'd say you were scared. Well, what do you think about Draco's life after Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows? Did it play out the way you thought it would, or did some of it surprise you? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and then click subscribe to get more videos from CBR. Bye for now.